In part two of our Contemplative Spirituality Concerns video here, I thought it'd be important to start out with really the main pioneer of the modern contemplative prayer, centering prayer, contemplative spirituality movement, a man named Thomas Keating. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about Thomas Keating, but before I do so, I thought it'd be interesting for you to know that Thomas Keating has endorsed a book written by Philip St. Romain. And this book here, called Kundalini Energy and Christian Spirituality, A Pathway to Growth and Healing, as you see, is a picture of a person with the chakras here, with the red cross, sort of in a yoga-type technique position. And Thomas Keating wrote the foreword to this book. Now, what's interesting about this is Kundalini energy, which is what we will look at in a little bit, is actually the ancient serpent power of Hinduism. And it is the aim of all yoga, according to some of the world's foremost well-known uh, yogis from India, as well as from America. And we'll look at some of those books as well, and some of those quotes. But the important point here is, is that the pioneer of the modern contemplative spirituality movement, Thomas Keating, is saying here that Christian spirituality can be mixed and integrated with kundalini energy, the ancient power of Hinduism. Now, Thomas Keating on the back cover of this book says, quote, this book will initiate Christians on the spiritual journey into this important but long-neglected dimension of the transforming power of grace, end quote. There's another quote on the back of this book by Mr. James Araj. It says, quote, The spontaneous awakening of kundalini-like energies that this book recounts has a significance that goes far beyond the importance it has in the personal life of Philip St. Romain. It is certainly fascinating to be allowed a glimpse into what it is like to suddenly encounter the ancient serpent power, or kundalini, that played so important a role in the religious life of ancient India. But since the author is at once a practicing Catholic devoted to the life of prayer and the recipient of experiences described by the sages of India, he has become unwittingly a laboratory in which we can see in microcosm some of the most crucial questions that face Christianity today." End quote. Now, in the foreword of this book, Keating himself, again, Keating is the pioneer of the modern contemplative centering prayer movement. And most people, who, I think today, who are doing contemplative prayer, centering prayer methods, and even different types of Christian yoga have no idea the danger of a book like this that is seeking to mix together Christian spirituality and Christian terminology with what is known as the ancient serpent power of Hinduism. Okay, Thomas Keating says here in the foreword of this book, he says, this book is the first description that I know of in Christian literature about the awakening of kundalini energy in a purely Christian context. Kundalini has long been known in Taoist, Hindu, and Buddhist spirituality. The fact that this complete awakening occurred in the context of a classical development of Christian prayer makes it an important contribution to the East-West dialogue. <laughs> That's interesting. He says also, given the newness of the Kundalini experience in Christian circles, However, any theological interpretation is bound to be tentative, end quote. Now, he goes on here and very clearly delineates his endorsement, his encouragement for people to read this book and seek out these types of experiences like Philip St. Romain has, has really put into his book here and cataloged. Um, it says, Kundalini energy, again, this is Philip St. Romain here, in the foreword of this book, quote, Kundalini is an enormous energy for good, but like all human potentials, 
It could also be used for selfish motives and thus become a source of serious harm. This is probably the energy that is so attractive in cult leaders. They may well impart a spiritual experience through the transmission of kundalini in a way that we do not yet understand. Energy, however great, is only energy. It is how one uses it that counts. Thus, the importance of the moral context in which kundalini is awakened. He goes on and he basically says here that this same type of awakening is what had occurred in the Christian mystics. He says, quote, Thus, for a Christian at least, it is essential that their energy be directed by the Holy Spirit. In Christian spirituality, the unfolding of the stages of prayer described by St. Teresa of Avila in the interior castle may be the fruit of the kundalini energy arising under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Kundalini may also be an active ingredient in the dark nights of St. John of the Cross. Again, St. John of the Cross and St. Teresa of Avila were Christian mystics of the past. Keating also states, and this is very important, quote, Kundalini has influenced ancient Eastern methods of medicine, such as acupuncture and Ayurvedic medicine. As these forms of healing become better known in the West, the question as to the exact nature of Kundalini will certainly arise. All the Eastern traditions concur that this energy should not be awakened except under the guidance of a qualified teacher. Since this energy can arise through the practice of ordinary Christian prayer forms, the need of spiritual directors who are at least knowledgeable in this area is evident. This is absolutely staggering. This guy is saying the kundalini energy is part of Christian spirituality. Well, I'm here to tell you, nothing could be further from the truth. As I will show you in just a moment, the root and the basis and the aim of all Hindu yogic practice is to arouse the serpent power, which yogis say resides at the base of the spine under the guise of kundalini energy. And kundalini is this serpent power that allegedly resides at the base of the spine where the chakra, one of the seven chakras are in the uh, Eastern mystical occult philosophy and worldview belief system. And when the kundalini is aroused, it goes up and around the spinal column in this energy-like way. It's actually uh, a form of demonic possession, demonic energy. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's demonic in origin, okay? It comes from fallen angels who are um, masquerading as what is called kundalini energy. And it's a form of a possession state. There are different forms of possession states. And anyway, this kundalini energy, which Philip St. Romain is cataloging and saying and integrating it as Christian spirituality, and Thomas Keating is saying that this is a form of Christian prayer and it occurs in Christian prayer circles, this is a lie. This is a flat-out lie. Now, they don't think they're lying, obviously. They think that this is part of the true spirituality that, as Keating states, quote, this book will initiate Christians on the spiritual journey into this important but long-neglected dimension of the transforming power of grace, end quote. Well, before I show you some of the books, again, Thomas Keating wrote the foreword to this book. And before I show you some of these books, it's important to note here that Thomas Keating is coming across as, you know, somewhat of a Christian theologian type, you know, contemplative, priest, monk, you know, all this sort of stuff. But I have to ask a question. Is he reloading Christian terminology with a brand new definition? or a new interpretation? Because I assure you this, anywhere you look in the entirety of the Holy Bible, you will never find anywhere any allusion to the Holy Spirit being likened to the kundalini energy 
of the ancient serpent power of Hinduism. But you will find it in the world of contemplative spirituality. You will find it in the world of occultism and the worldview of monism, all is one, one is all. The world of pantheism, the worldview of pantheism, all is God, God is all. And you will find it in the world of panentheistic philosophy, the teaching that God is in all things. Now, there are variations on what panentheism is and different kinds of panentheistic views. However, the teachings of kundalini, serpent power, the teachings of occultism, the teachings that are found in the yogic worldview of Hinduism are monistic, pantheistic, and panentheistic. And these are the very teachings that we find in the worldview of many people that are getting involved and teaching contemplative, centering prayer methods, where you can have this type of methodology, and Keating himself won't tell you it's a technique, but he will say it's a method. It's a method of prayer, outside of the biblical idea of prayer. It's a prayer for today. And Keating has gleaned from the mystics of the ages, from the Desert Fathers, from many people who are having experiences that are clearly outside the bounds of biblical Christianity. This is not biblical prayer. This is not what the psalmist was talking about, meditating on the Word of God day and night. This is not when uh, the psalmist had written, uh, Be still and know that I am God. This is... The, the text, be still and know that I am God, is God himself speaking in his power, in his greatness, in his glory to humanity. And humanity being humbled before the presence of God and God's greatness over his enemies. God's greatness over his enemies. And the psalmist is, is, is saying that from the hand of God saying, be still and know that I am God. Meaning God saying that, not the psalmist sitting there saying and thinking, be still and know that I am God. Meaning I as a human am God. That's blasphemy. That's false teaching. That's the lie back in Genesis 3.15 in the garden where the serpent told Eve, you know, you can eat that fruit. God knows that in the day you eat of it, you'll be like God knowing good and evil. So the idea here of Thomas Keating trying to mix kundalini energy and Christian spirituality like Philip St. Romain is just pure blasphemy. I don't know what else you call it. If you're going to study the Bible and be fair to Scripture, you have to interpret Scripture in context, and you have to use the words that the Holy Spirit has given in Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic, okay, the languages that the Scriptures were written in, you are never going to come up with the Holy Spirit integrating a demonic power such as <laughs> Kundalini, the Shakti power of Hinduism that you can see in yoga cults and you can see in ashrams and people rolling on the ground and having these ecstatic experiences and shaking and crying and laughing hysterically and feeling energy going in and out of the top of their head and extreme excruciating pain in their back, and debilitating physical psychoses, uh, psycho-spiritual activity, psycho-physical manifestations, screaming, spontaneous yoga poses, um, warrior poses, chicken poses, dancing, uh, different types of manifestations that you would see in uh, Makumba and voodoo cults, different types of powers like this, that are manifesting in churches. This is not the Holy Spirit, folks. This, this is what is called uh, Kundalini serpent power, the ancient power of Hinduism. But it is not, it is not, it is not the Holy Spirit of Scripture. And the Holy Spirit of the Bible is a spirit of truth. Okay, there's another thing that John the Apostle mentioned, the spirit of error. And what we are going to see as we look at some of these books now, I'm going to show you I'm going to show you the root of where the kundalini serpent power comes from. Okay, the Keating has been tapping into and saying that this is what the Christian mystics of the past perhaps were being involved with. These things are dangerous. 
they have absolutely insane repercussions upon the heart and mind of a human being. Uh, they can lead one very quickly into uh, demonic possession states. And this is on the internet. You can see these things on the internet. I don't recommend it. But you can also see it in the literature that is written by many, many Hindu cult leaders, people who are yogis, people who are uh, leading ashrams and, and doing what is called Shakti Pat, where they put their hand on someone's forehead, or they look at them, or they do this, or they throw this power and energy. And again, this is a demonic power. This is not the Holy Spirit. So I'll show you now some of these books that will prove very clearly uh, where this energy, where this power comes from. It comes straight from the occult, the world of occultism and demonism.